My name is Joseph Pacheco. I am a local sketch artist. I work primarily in pen and ink. I also do graphite, colored pencil, as well as marker sketches. I got into art by being born, which I had nothing to do with. But from a young age, I loved coloring. I always colored growing up. When I was younger, my mother used to do these uh, art nights at the house, arts and crafts, where we would do different and various art projects. Anywhere from uh, gluing string onto a picture that she had drawn and then covering it in aluminum foil to have a, have a raised uh, drawing to uh, finger painting and uh, various activities like that. And so I've always drawn. My history of Haley. My history with Haley, Idaho started in February of 1986. Uh, my family had moved up there, my mom and both my sisters, so I followed them up to Haley, Idaho. Um, moved from Santa Cruz, California to Haley, Idaho. Santa Cruz, California is a beach community in Northern California with pretty temperate climate. And I moved up to Haley where there was like four feet of snow on the ground and I hated the place. I absolutely hated it <laughs> when I first moved here. And uh, after a while though, it took me a week to get a job and I got the job and I uh, started, you know, skiing, which was fun. I'd never been skiing before. I'd only been to the snow once before. And I uh, was able to just start exploring you know, the Wood River Valley, and it was beautiful. It was like living in a postcard. And I noticed that people, you know, saved up money to, to go there on vacation for just, you know, a week or two weeks and enjoy themselves, and I got to live there. And it was, it was wonderful. And uh, then I, I ran a, made a friend, and she had some art that I really liked, and I copied it, and it turned out good, and I started drawing. I realized, oh, yeah, I can draw. And so, um, you know, growing up in California, you just didn't see any kind of wildlife in, in Northern California. It's all concrete. One town goes into the next, into the next, into the next, into the next. A lot of agriculture, but not, you know, I'd seen cows and horses. <laughs> but in Haley, I started seeing elk and moose and deer and all these just crazy exotic animals I'd never seen before. And just the wildlife in Haley is amazing. And <clears throat> the herds in the winter come down to the valley floor to feed. And so it really gives you a lot of time to study them, you know, to study their anatomy, how they move, you know, their, their mannerisms to say, you know. And so I just started looking at the wildlife and checking out the wildlife all the time and started drawing wildlife. And I consider myself a wildlife artist. Um, as you tell, you know, growing up coastal California, I, you see a lot of lighthouses and dolphins and sea turtles and stuff in my artwork as well. Uh, that, that has stayed with me. But I found all these other new fascinating animals to draw, mountain lions, bears, uh, and these are all animals that I've seen in the wild up in the Wood River Valley. The majority of my stuff I just draw out of my head. I like to draw out of my head. Um, so, I mean, I just draw it a lot, so I know how. <laughs> Somebody who has totally mastered whatever form they're using and it becomes unconscious in the execution. And so they no longer, in oil painting, have to pay attention to how they hold the brush, how the paint goes on the canvas, how much paint is on the brush. Uh, mixing the colors, they just mix and it happens. They don't have to think about what it takes to do that. Uh, coming into the form uh, of mastery is uh, moving into just pure flow um, within what you're doing. Uh, for the most part, for reference, r reference photos I'll use occasionally if it's something I haven't drawn before, or especially if it's a, you know, if it's a commission. Uh, say a portrait or something and of course you go through a reference photo uh, mostly I like to draw wildlife any and that would be anywhere from um, big cats to bumblebees you know and everything in between uh, I go through phases and then went through a big cat phase for a while 
And now I'm just in really into florals and birds. I love drawing wings. I love drawing wings and feathers. So I'm a public artist. I draw out in public. Um, that's how I get most of my commissions. Uh, and that's my exposure. Is sitting in coffee shops in any town I land in or visit and drawing. One of my favorite experiences, I was sitting down at Dawson Taylor's in downtown Boise. And uh, <clears throat> this blind guy comes up to me and tells me how much he likes my art. <laughs> and so I just kind of looked up and I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he walked off, and that, that was one of my favorite experiences. So, um, you know, it made me feel like, you know, my art was actually enlightening and illuminating. <laughs> but, you know, it's the feedback. I, I like the feedback. And I, and I like the, the experience of people experiencing my art, of people seeing the time that goes into it. You know, seeing the blank piece of paper where they're not really interested in what I'm doing so much as I'm laying it out very lightly in pencil and they can hardly see what's going on, to um, where I start inking it in and they start seeing the progress and the details and stuff and then the interest gets peaked. And to me, that's my favorite part. You know, I like for people to see the progression of it and to know that we just don't do that and art magically appears. And then we put a price tag on it. You know, it's, it's work. And it's a job, and I, I like for people to see that and know it. I've met a lot of lovely people around, so many talented people, uh, like Joseph, for example. I mean, it's amazing what he can do. Uh, and, and the patience that man has. Oh, my gosh, I wouldn't be able to do it. The stippling that he does, both hands. Cards are my bread and butter. I do a lot of greeting cards now. And uh, <clears throat> I've sold those in different states, had them showing. Uh, also, I've done many of the the art festivals around, uh, you know, Canyon County, Ada County. Um, I've bought his Christmas artwork and I bought his Valentine's Day artwork, and it's just it's really cool because he he does it just all by hand in ink and pencil, and um, I can usually tell just by first glance that I like it, and so I'll buy it. I currently show um, at First Thursdays uh, at the Alaska Building with uh, two other artists, uh, Shishanon Weston and Judson Cottrell. Well, I'm Shishanon Weston. I've been an artist my whole life. I, I'm an oil painter and I like uh, painting um, landscapes. I like going outside. First Thursday is an art show um, in Boise that um, in all the different shops open up and there's probably on a, a good thir first Thursday there's probably eight to ten different galleries open so there's a gallery still that goes from five till nine o'clock. Uh, hello I'm Judson Cottrell I'm a fractal artist that creates in 2D and 3D. Uh, fractals uh, means a pattern repeating back to infinity They're in, in nature since the dawn of time. Like as a tree limb goes out from the tree the leaves get smaller but they're still the same shape it's a repeating pattern. Uh, my name is Linda. I've been coming to First Thursdays for about four years now, as long as I've lived in Boise. And um, I've seen Joseph's artwork on and off for at least almost the four years. Uh, First Thursday is great for businesses. Um, the art galleries stay open later. Um, people get exposed to a lot more things. Um, I know personally, like, I've bought more things just because of going around on First Thursdays. And um, I just think it's a great thing for the community. Yeah, and I would say it's very welcoming. Don't be shy. Go into the places. Um, most people, m most places have, you know, and not that it's the biggest drawer, but little appetizers and drinks and stuff like that. Not everybody does, but I would just say don't be shy. Just go out there and go into these places. Get a schedule online and you'll be fine. First Thursday, I think, has done a whole lot for the art community in Boise. Uh, Boise itself is a very artistic community, um, uh, much more so than uh, other places. And we have some very, very fine artists here. The problem is we don't have a culture for people to buy art. Um, it's something that people learn from their families and their parents, and they inherit paintings, and they know what it original drawings are, original paintings are. And uh, in Boise, we don't have that type of culture. 
and I'm not sure why we don't, but um, it, it's a difficult market here to try and actually sell. That's the problem with art, is trying to make a living with art, because uh, it is very difficult to sell uh, paintings uh, or drawings. A person really does have to understand business and marketing uh, to uh, be a good salesperson and uh, really engage um, the market. And that's something I am not. That's a very difficult part for me. I could do the art, but selling art is very, very hard. There's a lot of people that come in and say, we love your art, and don't stop doing it. And there's very few sales. Um, I, I love the exposure when it's busy. I love the interest. I just wish, you know, there'd be more sales. It would help us. Most artists have a full-time job when they do art on the side. That's the hard part is trying to meet the right people and network and be at the right time with the right, you know, the right spot to meet someone to make money, to get, to make a living off so, of it. Yeah, every once in a while I do think about quitting art. Um, I think about it mostly because financially, you know, it's, it's hard to sell art. Uh, people don't have a lot of disposable income laying around at this time in, in uh, our history here. Uh, you know, they have rent, and rent's all-time high, food's all-time high, gas is going up daily, entertainment is going up. So art is one of the last things that people are willing to take their money out and buy. Um, so for me, when I get down about art, it's because, you know, I have bills to pay too. I have gas to get from my car, I have car insurance, I have rent, and I have to buy food. This week I could afford some groceries. Woohoo! Groceries! You know, so it's, and it takes a lot of money to do that. And so when I get dejected, it's mostly because I make barely enough to eke by let alone to have extra to do the funner things in life. You know, so it's almost like all I do, art is a job for me. Art is what I do for a living. And sometimes I do it 70, 80 hours a week, you know? And, and I just, I don't see the payout, the big payout, you know, as where a, you know, a $10 an hour job, 40 hours a week, you know, would pay my bills. Whereas this 80 hour a week job doesn't. <laughs> and so it just gets really frustrating. And so that's usually when I think, okay, I'm just gonna throw my hat in and quit doing art and get a job. And it, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of great artists around the area. And the art scene, it's growing. And, and, the, and the city of Boise is growing too. So there's, there's promise. It, it's an amazing society we have here. And so, you know, my plans are to, as long as I'm able to, um, to just draw for a living, do my art, because it's really what I want to do and what I love doing. I've gotten some lucky breaks, which has allowed me to draw, where I'm not really making a lot of money, but I don't have to put out a lot of money either to live. So, you know, if I keep catching breaks and just keep getting the money I'm asking now for my art, then I plan to draw.